have an our testimony part from our emergency meeting. Um, Alethea, can you give us our first name, please? Sure. The first person I have uh, that is signed up to testify. Again, just as a reminder, we're starting with our residents first, then moving into our non-residents. Our residents have five minutes to speak, and our non-residents three minutes. The first person I have as a resident is Devon Vick. Is Devon Vick here? And I'll be moving quickly down the list. So, okay, uh, Terry Acker. And if you are on a device where you can't unmute through WebEx, you can unmute star uh, six nine, I believe it is to unmute. Okay, Patricia Hardman. Patricia Hardman. Okay, I don't see that person either. Uh, Shante High, Miss High, is she here? I'll continue on the list. Uh, Rosa Burbridge, Miss Burbridge. I see Miss Burbridge. Are you able to unmute? Okay, I'll circle back to Ms. Burbridge. Uh, Ms. Linda Brown. And I do hear sound, so I know you guys can unmute. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, Heather Day. Ms. Day. Okay, Marlena Childs. Here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Ms. Childs. You have five minutes okay. to proceed. Okay, um, I wanted to discuss um, an ongoing issue that I've been having, me and my daughter have been having um, at Project Housing. Um, I do want to comment that I think that you have, that I believe that you should have a policy change for people that are living on Project Housing um, due to the Domestic Violence Act and the um, disability. And the reasons why, I'm gonna start off with 2015, I was housed at um, Langston Terrace. I had safety issues and property issues along with deplorable housing conditions. The roof leaked, which um, I had puddles of water in the living room. Um, we had um, corroded staircases, corroded bathroom walls that you can put your fist in the walls. And there was visible mold in the tub. Me and my daughter had to shower and take baths over. Uh, nevertheless, um, the walls that you couldn't even hang, um, hang um, curtains up because the walls were crumbling in. And the ongoing drug trafficking in the hallways. Nevertheless, I felt bullets hit my floor. And um, I had to try to find a space to stand so that the, when the, if the bullets traveled to the floor, I wouldn't got shot. Cut your camera off. Then, yes, cut your camera off. And then we had uh, people that are tripping off a of PCP vandalize my mother's car. She's incapacitated. They vandalized her car. They have electricity that goes off in a whole community. So now I'm going to go to Lee Droid. I was placed in Lee Droid in 2018. As soon as I was placed there, my daughter was sleeping in her bedroom. A bullet traveled through that brand new air conditioner through the, um, to the wall and, and, and narrowly escaped from hitting her in her head as she slept. A police report was taken. We have weekly shootings up there. Again, they vandalized my mother's car with a bullet. Nevertheless, the rat that were eating the wires from the inside of the car in the trunk of the car. Each time you replace those wires is $300. My mother is disabled, and you guys know I'm poor. I'm at Project Housing. So, and then I want to let you guys know that the mice and the rats are so bad that they eat through the foundation of Lee Droid that I can see their heads popping up, and I caught 90. 90 mice I caught. Okay, um, nevertheless, the 
domestic violence person that harmed me at Langston Terrace was um, placed as an employee at Leroy. So that meant the person who broke my teeth that I have to have surgery for, they had to pull the teeth out of my mouth, cut the um, infection. I had to see him on this property working, painting my windows, looking in my windows. Then when we was placed in the hotel, my uh, apartment was vandalized. D.C. Housing didn't take them to court. I had to take them to court, and I retrieved some of the money of the vandalized that their staff did. Okay? Um, so we're going to move on to the, the, um, the, the tenant that lives underneath us. Because I walked with crutches, the mother got mad, sent her son upstairs to try to fight me. Now, remember, I'm considered as a disabled elderly person. Okay, so I had a 300-pound person that I had to uh, fight off by myself because it takes D.C. House and police a lot of time to get there uh, and also D.C. police because they get jumped at this property. This is the same property that Ms. Hightower, the manager, got assaulted and attacked in her office. So these properties aren't safe. And then um, the, the, the person who attacked me at um, Langston, he also utilizes the Southwest Center, the Southwest Center, he utilizes it. His family are in-laws at D.C. Housing Authority. My tires, after when I, um, uh, after, after in the September meeting, after I spoke, my tires, four tires, the air was taken off, the capsules was taken off. Okay, they have cameras out here. Um, every time we ask for, you know, footage or can we um, add it to the report, um, the email addresses at the um, D.C. Housing Police, it rolls back. Nobody can call. We never get no concrete answers. Um, okay, in Southwest, we had it, I have to, it, um, when I wake up, I have to be careful that I don't step on dead mice in here. The mice are eating through the walls. You have flying cockroaches and stuff enter underneath my door, coming through the front of the building to get in here. Nevertheless, you have tenants that are throwing trash from the third story out their window that are feeding these rats. Then you have the appliances that the rats live in in your, part, in your building. Um, the other issues they fix, but I had to live here, and the lady's toilet was leaking over me for two and a half months before it was fixed. And the labor was making up excuses instead of fixing it. Oh, and let me explain some of your maintenance guys. The maintenance guys, the older ones, they have good skills, but they tell you to your face, I'm getting ready to retire. You can report me all you want to. And we only have two people on the premises. Miss Childs, so, I'm going to have to stop yes. you. I'm sorry, your, your five minutes is up, but thank you for your testimony. Yes. We do have uh, someone uh, reporting notes, and we will definitely be following up with you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, I know I saw uh, Heather Day. Okay, uh, Chorus Lowry. Chorus Lowry. Christine Spencer. Spencer. Okay, I'll move along. Akeisha McDougald. Hi, I'm here. Yes, please proceed. You have five minutes. Oh goodness! I just came on just in time. How you, how are you guys doing today? Good, um, thank you. Okay, glad to hear that. I have uh, been displaced due to flooding in my unit. Um, it, the flood occurred the last week of June. Since then, we, me and my family, me and my children, have been living in hotels. I am disabled. I have mobility issues and the place had not been inspected by housing in this four months. Uh, it was deemed an uninhabitable and I'm not entirely sure who did that. If it was the contractors or someone, the landlord had hired, but it was deemed uninhabitable. Um, in the process of this entire summer, um, we have had to, I have had to call attorneys on my old landlord because she threatened to throw our stuff out. We hadn't had a chance to go through it. 
She was still collecting um, rent from you guys. She has no business license. Um, there was mold all through the apartment, all in the walls, all in the floors. Serious health issues followed. Um, lost everything. So I'm without furniture, we're without clothing, with, without bedding, without towels. And of course, of staying in these different hotels between PG County and DC, that was not paid for by my landlord nor housing. Um, a company that I do um, community work with, public speaking for, those are the people that took care of me and my family through this entire um, ordeal. Um, there's no accountability. I had been trying to get out of this apartment for over two years. They had to dig up my bathroom and my bedroom once before because the, the piping beneath the building was crumbling. Sewage was coming up through the, uh, through the bathroom, the shower, the sink, and the toilet. Um, I went without a refrigerator for two and a half months. Um, my case managers at Metropolitan Education Solutions knew about this, and they did nothing because I owed a balance on my rent. I had lost my job due to my health. Um, I wasn't receiving any government assistance. Um, my rent remained the same. There was no change in my rent uh, throughout all of this. And we have been exposed to dangers in these hotels. Um, strange men, sometimes staff had access to my room where me and my daughter and son were. And they would come in at different times of the night. They've thrown away our belongings because we had two rooms. Um, they've stolen some things. And in the course of us moving from place to place to place, we've lost some things. We have very little to lose. Again, I am disabled and I have mobility issues and I suffer from chronic pain and spinal issues. I was sent back into a unit that was deemed uninhabitable the week before last. No, last week, I'm sorry. <laughs> All of a sudden there was no appointments made I was just getting called on the day of, and I was supposed to get up and move when I was called. Um, $50 spent on Ubers traveling back and forth to this place. So for a 10 minute meeting, a 10 minute inspection. Um, there has been a, a, a huge deficit in communication and accountability on housing's behalf. I spoke at a meeting in June and documented what we had been going through. That was the beginning of this. And everybody was so shocked and surprised and, and, and couldn't believe that all this was happening. And here it is October, the middle of October, and we're still in hotels. I have located a unit, I have located a landlord, and we're still kind of stuck because her unit passed inspection this Wednesday. And we were waiting to find out what the next steps were. <clears throat> now, I have some people working on trying to find that out now. But in all of that, um, like I said, I'm, I've been trying to find out before all of this happened. It took all of this to happen. For two years, I was trying to find out who my housing specialist was. Couldn't find that. Couldn't get nobody on the phone for over two years. Now, I'm, I'm without our belongings. And I'm here to say, like, Who's going to compensate us for that? Who's going to reimburse us for that? Um, moving into a place with no furniture, no bedding, no clothing. Winter is approaching. Uh, this has been the worst experience I've ever had. Uh, slumlords, you know, just, I'm keeping it short as I possibly can, but the stuff that I endured in, in the four years that I lived in that place was unconscionable. Uh, and I spoke out about it over and over and over again to no avail. There was no help. There was no, there, was any, there wasn't anything and there wasn't any transparency and there wasn't any information about who I could contact, who I could reach out to. There's too many hands in the pot, and there's. Uh, Ms. McDougal, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Um, again, we do have someone taking notes, and you will be contacted regarding your situation. I, 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 I told me that before in June, and nobody contacted me. And I reached out to people before. I reached out to Miss uh, 
Bussy, I had her text email. I had several people's emails on the board and was left out to dry. Ms. McDougan, this is this is Bill Slover. I'd like to actually uh, respond. Um, we started communicating in, in July 20th. We spoke on the phone. Um, you mm -hmm. emailed me a number of times. I forwarded every single one of your emails to the staff. Ms. Director Donald, you and I spoke on this specific issue on a number of occasions. Um, I'm seriously disappointed that we're still at, the, at this point having mm -hmm. this conversation. Uh, the last email I got, which I forwarded to the agency, was from Miss Mix Dooglin saying that the agency had not inspected her previous unit, which she hasn't occupied for four months, which leads me to believe that we've been paying the rent for the last four months because we never, and while she's been in a hotel. It's unclear what we've been doing for the last four months, why we weren't extracting her from that lease situation. And so as a board member, I get lost as to what I can do because I have four, I have just counted 35 emails I've gotten, all of which I forwarded to the agency. So, and I do remember when you came on and I do remember everybody telling you that they would reach out to you. And then you ended up reaching out to me, which I appreciate. But I was unable to do anything for you, clearly, and that's a frustration on my part. So I'm sorry the agency's let you down, but I, I don't know yeah. what else to do. I don't know what else either. Um, there needs to be a major overhaul in how DHS runs the system. I, I, I it's madness because even my caseworker uh, for Metropolitan Education Solutions, everybody is always just frazzled and burnt out and stressed after dealing or trying to deal with people in housing, trying to get some services, trying to get some information, trying to get results. Um, Mr. Slover, you did um, help in July. Again, it's August and it'll be November soon. And I don't know if we'll be in a new place by then. And then even if we are, what am I supposed to sleep and sit on? Okay, I have videos of how the contractors came in and demolished my home for the second time. Okay, like I said, I have spinal issues. I don't have any money to keep. Nobody's going to be, I, I, I mean, and, and, and it's not just a monetary thing. This is a personal thing, you know, where memories, uh, family stuff, you know, things like that. I don't, like I said, I don't know. And we still have to go through. It looks like a junkyard. That unit failed inspection, by the way. And she tried to clean it up. It looked a thousand times better than it did before. But this is not the second. This is the second time that we had to be out of our apartment. But this one is how many months? I don't even know at this point. And we're still here. So, so, so Director Donald, just curious. And people put on the show. We, we can take this people put on the show. Yes, I understand. We're pulling everything together that was assigned to a senior level staff person. Um, I think the problem is too that there are multiple jurisdictions and that um, Ms. McDougal is really a DHS client. So we're trying to coordinate and she does have case management. So we're trying to sort out the roles and responsibilities. Um, <clears throat> there, there has been follow up just but we're, we're pulling it all together at the end. Um, we'll have a report and see what, who has to do what, who's responsible for what. So I think from our agency's perspective, mm -hmm. at some point we just need to take over. It doesn't matter who the client, who the payer, who it is. You know, it's incumbent upon us to go in and fix these things. And so we made that promise to her in July. So let's get it. Let's do what we can to get it done so that she doesn't have to come back the board again and again i apologize miss mcdougall it's uh it's unfortunate yeah but okay so who who does who has who's going to be responsible for for the loss the losses we incurred who who's i mean who's we, we help to, us? Yes. can we we'll pull it all together we have to make sure we have all the correct information because i know there's some information there was that we just have to make sure everything is correct. And well, how long is that going to take? Because yes, ma'am, you got to in June. It's October. Understood. And it's not that no one has responded. I think 
there's a lot more to the story, but we will have a couple it really of isn't, It really okay. isn't anymore. And to, to, because again, it's not been a secret and I've not been quiet about this. And this isn't the first time, this is just the last and ultimate thing. Like I said, I've been trying to get out of this apartment for over two years. So what else do you have to pull together? What other information do you need? Ma'am, we're not gonna solve this at this board meeting right now. We have said, I've got everyone putting together every piece of information so we can find out exactly what the status of your situation is so that we can follow up and do what needs to be done. And um, that, it's not gonna happen. I think I right need to resolve this, and from this um, issue right now at this meeting. I'm just asking for some legitimate responses or legitimate answers. Ma'am, that's why I said I've got multiple staff who've worked on this, multiple agencies. We need to put it all in one place and find out exactly what needs to be done and what is accurate and what is not accurate. And we will, but I don't have it in front of me. So by continuing this dialogue, it's not going to move that forward. So, okay. That's Okay, I'll continue. Uh, Excuse me, I believe my name was called Ms. Burbridge. I was away. Okay, Ms. Burbridge, go ahead. You have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to apologize to the residents of DCHA for the deplorable, atrocious living conditions that you are like myself forced to live and I thought at one point that uh, management would do that or someone from the board. Uh, the audit from HUD should have been a wake up call that what you assume you are doing, you are not properly doing. One of the things that I would like to recommend is that you start listening with empathy to hear what people are saying. So many management ago, if you had to listen to the residents, we would not find ourselves in this place. You can uh, get all the executives, you can get all of the peoples with the alleged credentialing, but unless you know what the real problem is, how can you begin to make a change? What that HUD report said in plain term is that you are a failed that you are not doing what you are supposed to do, that you have turned an organization into a business, that your alleged developers are investors, and that you're taking the residents, throwing them off to the side and not having any accountability. When are you going to listen to the residents? If we trust you to do your due diligence, how can we get the help that we need? If just some portion of the meetings that you had, you would set aside a committee like this, a bondsman, and a bondsman should be a non-partial individual. It should not be an employee of the association that they're working for. I've been in a bondsman. I have acronyms behind my name also. And this seems like a subtile hostile takeover when we talk about it. You have somewhere along the line gotten off track. You do not realize you are here for the residents. And that's why the management and the executive board keep switching over continuously. I can guarantee you that if you had one good meeting with the resident, so you get funds uh, for public housing repair, where's that money going to? Until you can do this alleged um, turnaround with the red and all of that, why are not homes being repaired? And then you get on these meetings. I think it's very disrespectful when you have these meetings and you force us to wait one, three, four hours while you batter back and forth. You know, this is not how to start it. Let's make a new start. Let's do something different. 
You will fail continuously if you continue to listen to people who have experience in business and that experience in people. I'm not just a lease number. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I'm an aunt. I'm a human being in a resident. Why can't you show me that kind of respect? As an executive leader, the first thing I would have done was to apologize for what's going on. The second thing I would have done was to hold a meeting where you can come to me and I would hold my staff accountable. We just heard a testimony of what's not going right. Let's not worry about placing blame. You know, contracts are coming up for renewal. We need to think and as a human being, be humane and say to yourself, am I really earning this salary? Have my presence in DCHA made a difference? Because if we continue to move forward with handling this as a business perspective, you're going to continue to fail. Residents are going to continue to live the way they do. And it's just a pity that no one has any empathy. You know, do you not feel bad for earning your salary? And month after month, you had these devastating testimonies. They've touched my heart and I'm a resident. Do you not want to pay attention to what you're doing? Do you want better for us? Because we do. So now you can make the change. And I'm asking you, I'm actually pleading with you to listen to the residents, to get someone that's impartial to tell you what you need to do and win back the confidence. Because right now, not only does HUD see you guys as unfit, incapable, incompetent, and a waste of time and money, we, the residents, see you as people who love to tell untruths and use technical terms to keep us in slavery. Barbara, thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, Ms. Sh Ms. High indicated that she's here ready to speak. Ms. High, you can go ahead and proceed. You have five minutes, ma'am. Ms. High, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have five minutes. Sorry about that. The HUD report states that DCHA is failing, which we as residents all knew and as uh, resident councils all already knew. The regulations are not being followed on any aspect of what is supposed to be done for the residents. Self-sufficiency doesn't seem to be of importance to DCHA nor the Board of Commissioners, except for a few commissioners. Equity and human rights doesn't seem to be of a priority to this agency. Residents like myself, who are striving to achieve more for myself and my family, are being hindered by this agency with their personal grudges, as well as their hindrances with not supporting not supporting our small businesses, um, although we're section three registered, you know, HUD section three registered. Um, there needs to be more done for us as residents. Um, I don't feel that it's fair that only a select few residents that hold the HCVP vouchers are selected for home ownership. And I will use um, DCHA's tweet about our, our resident from Park Morton, Ms. Connette Dyke, formerly of 620 Morton Street, who used her voucher to purchase a home that they keep tweeting and retweeting about. And there are others from other properties who have used their voucher. It's not fair that these residents have the opportunity to purchase and buy. And I speak for myself and other residents like Ms. Contessa Allen-Starks, who owns Keys to the World 
um, travel agency and myself, High Alert Emergency Preparedness, who, it, and we're all working hard and diligently to do something better. Now, if you all feel that you don't want to assist us in acquiring equity, then you need to assist us in in moving out of this city because there's no way for us to grow and prosper. And if you feel like you can't do your job, which is your mission statement, and like Ms. Burbridge said previously, providing safe, clean, and affordable housing, and not, and actually this is my statement, not privatizing, then you need to step down and move out the way for people who have the humanity and respect that will provide us with this and adhere to the rules that HUD has applied to you. You all have received more than $76 million in one fiscal year. What have you done with the money? Absolutely nothing. We want to make six figures. We want to travel the world. Give us a chance to do that with our families too. Invest in our businesses. Amplify us to a point that we can move to self-sufficiency and move to a better class and even move out of housing altogether. Thank you very much. And next is uh, Ms. Van Gossery. Ms. Van Gossery, can you unmute? You hear me? Yes, I hear Hello. you now. Yes, we okay, hear you. This, this is former Commissioner Von Gossery, and I'm being transparent. I am one of those commissioners that HUD reviewed and interviewed. So you all have a list. I represented the present time a very small number of public housing residents, the HCVP. And as their advocate, this is what we want in writing. We want you to be transparent and tell us the name of our elected commissioners of DCHA who contributed to that interview. We want to know how many employees that was interviewed and what categories. We want to know how many contractors were interviewed and what categories. We want that all in writing and mailed, mailed, so this is a postage budget to every resident who occupies a unit. Commissioner Slover, when I came aboard, has spoken to me about a HUD audit, that the resident and um, resident commissioners, we need to learn, and I read up on resident audits, how a resident could get a housing authority audit. So the blame, I'm not pointing fingers, because I graduate every employee who had the strength and the courage to tell the truth. Every resident that commissioners gave names to and had talked to, I commend you, because that report is a fact. Now, moving from there, we need to stop pointing fingers. And Brenda, I told you, you need to door knock and get residents that never been on a board. They need to have a focus group and train new eyes and when you train them, they are trained first by learning what I learned. And that was the HUD regulation, the HUD initiative. I asked you, and I haven't been gone over 90 days. That's why I did not run. I wanted to see some new eyes at that table. For the 90 days that I've been off the board, I have been monitoring this housing authority. Now, what Brenda get credit for is, A, she enforced a contract that was already written, so therefore WMATA is now open in Southwest. She enforced paperwork that was done for Bury Farm. She moved that. Okay, pay attention to her ribbon cutting. 
Those ribbon cuttings are done under another director entity. You have to realize when a new director come in, they have two choices. That move to work is Tyrone Garrett's move to work, which has been tweeted. If residents follow my instructions and don't be intimidated by my tone of voice and understand I'm only the messenger, and after 17 years, handing out paper, standing up and talking, I am proud of the residents who are now looking at things differently. You have to plan your community. And then we want to know how, Brenda, you're going to fix up every vacancy in every community in the time in the time frame. I really think you didn't listen really to the question. And I gave a recommendation. The apprentice program should have been in every one of these vacant apartments and fixing it up like they did the resident council office in Potomac Garden. They, the apprentice program has shown their work through this city. You don't need no contractor to come in Potomac Garden. Get our residents who have gone through your apprentice program. They have been licensed. They are the ones who should be hired to do these vacancies. And they're doing it cost effective for you because you're going to use DOE. I'm giving everybody a plan. And furthermore, every director that comes in the housing authority, I dare you to tell anyone that residents are incompetent. We teach you your job without getting paid. All of us do. We all may not get along. But we all share the same roaches, the same cockroaches, the same plastering that need to be plastered. And then I don't understand why you can't reach out to Adrian. Bring her to the housing authority. Who knows it better than your assistant deputy director? Thank and you. then we want to um, know, in writing, what type of money Adrian left our agent in? Because in our last time I studied what she did, she left you with a lot of money. She left you with a plan. Ms. But what we do when we when then I get off. What we do wrong as a as a group, and we are a business. The housing authority is a business. And maybe if you act like a business, and the residents, we do act like a business, and let them not confuse you. It is a business. All housing authorities are a business. The question is, where do we fit in? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next is Detrice Belt. Mr. Trees Belt. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, Ms. Patricia Malloy. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Patricia Malloy, former resident of Lincoln Heights and resident of the Resident Council. I accepted a voucher under the new community initiative to relocate to an off site, which is a strain. DCHA is out of compliance on numerous federal policies and procedure, issues, contracts, over and undercharging by not calculating rent and subsidy correctly, not providing safe and habitable living conditions, residents information not being secured properly. Within the Lincoln Heights property, boards are being removed off units that have been boarded over two years. Contractors has been hired in Lincoln Heights to reopen the I-2550 place to partially renovate the vacant units. The contractors are not completing the units. They are making the units 80%. The property staff have to come in and complete the units. Also, residents are still living in buildings with one or two residents. The buildings are not secured, peeling paint, smell of urine, crime. I listened at uh, Chief Marfin talk about the crime going down um, to 10 properties. Within Lincoln Heights, crime is daily. There are shootings, there are sounds of gunshots, there are cars speeding up and down the street. Groups have started to gather on the side of the rental office and management and public safety is aware of it. Maintenance, when maintenance enters the residence units, 
They are telling them they do not have materials. They do not have money to purchase materials. My question is, why is it management and the foreman can't get a budget to purchase simple supplies as an oven uniter, a gasket for a refrigerator, plumbing materials? Commissioner, you really, really, and I know you've seen Lincoln Heights on TV and whatever. My last thing is, for some of the residents in Lincoln Heights, their rent has not been posted for two to three months. We have a senior that calls me every single day. I just want you all to know, I might not live in Lincoln Heights. I am, I'm the ANC commissioner. I am still invested in Lincoln Heights property. Don't sleep on the residents over there. There is so much crime. Bullets, the sounds of gunshots and the shooting daily are going inside a residence unit. I could give you residents names. I can give you residents names who rent is not being posted. And last but least, do something about the telephones. Lincoln Heights does not have telephones. They have the headphones on the computer. It's bad that the residents have to walk up to the office to get a response. No one is answering the phone. Commissioners, try it yourself. Try calling 202-724-8534 or 35. They are not answering the phone. Only thing I can say is God bless everyone, but I feel DCHA should go under receivership. To me, it will be a better service. Commissioner Slover, Commissioner Hoffman, Commissioner Council, Commissioner Blackson, thank you for responding to the residents of Lincoln Heights. They have been calling you. And I hope, Director Donald, I know you feel that maybe I should not say or be quiet, but I am going to say this. Be careful. No one can tell me anything. I am a commissioner. I do read. I do get notices. And it's not looking good for DCHA. It's really not. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Malloy. Uh, next is Karen Settles. Ms. Settles. Yes, I'm here. Please proceed. You have five minutes. Excuse me. I said, please proceed. You have five minutes. So I, I need some clarity in um, um, the purpose or the agenda for this meeting today. Uh, I've been in and out because uh, I have some other things, but could you just tell me what this, the purpose of this meeting is so that I can be clear on it? Hello? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, this is Commissioner Slover. The purpose of the meeting was for the board to have the opportunity to review the HUD report with the executive director and executive session. That's can you emergency. I, I can't even hear what you're saying. The purpose of the meeting was for the board to be able to meet with the executive director and her team to discuss the HUD review in the executive session. So, so, and the public is, is to um, weigh in from that perspective. That's that's the agenda. Can can I say one thing? The fact is is that our housing authority, um, um, uh, uh, through Move to Work, which I have been, it, it's been growing on me. Move to Work because I, I wasn't in agreement with the implementation of Move to Work in the district. I knew where it originated from, and that was Memphis, Tennessee, in 1995, where they ran it in a good, runnable way and a humane way. But what I will say is right now. We need to really remove ourselves from move to work if I don't do it anyway, because it's been a lot of human rights violations that maybe the housing authority don't even know about. I, I'm, I'm a scholar on the move to work. I know that. But it's many things that we can do to make it better if we resume, but we need to step back from move to work right now. I don't care what anybody says, I know what I'm talking about, because it's been abused. And this meeting, I'm just, I mean, I said, and, and, and this is no disrespect, 
what kind of dog and pony show do you think that we should be a part of for you to be discussing the HUD report? What are you discussing about? Are you going to do a process of elimination to tell us about um, what is true, what is false, whatever? This is no way to hold a meeting about a HUD report that nobody knew these things exist until HUD alerted us through the media. Now, we live it. How inhumane can that be? Yes. Yeah. Very disrespectful. I'm telling you that. And I want to, in all I want to go to the way, so you need to go? In my, and my only thing, the last thing I want to say is we, we are better than this for each other. And I expect more because the agency that works for and are in place on behalf of, of for the residents' best interest, I, I, I know that we've been failed. That's, that's above and beyond everything. It doesn't matter about the failure. What matters is do you understand it's been failed? That's what really matters. And how? We need sensitivity training across the board because the life that residents live, we need you all to do what some years back, the, the um, director that we had, uh, his name was Price. He came from Alaska. He stayed on, on one of the properties, which was Valley Green, for a whole month to see what we go through every day. I invite you to uh, and challenge you to do that. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, Ms. Settle. Uh, next is Patricia Bishop. Ms. Bishop. Good afternoon. Before you start my clock, let me just speak honestly and from my heart. We're going to keep on marching. We're going to keep on walking into everybody sees that you have mistreated the people for years. My grandparents don't like this from the heavens above and what's going on. And I will roll my wheelchair as a disabled person. And now you can start the clock. Good evening, everyone. This HUD report is exactly what it says. Point one, how do you treat the low income women that you are there to provide and serve for, for these living conditions that we live in? We gave the chances for not one month, but for several months from a trial to a point. We don't want the same old, same old and how we be treated in our homes, what your contractors do, what you allow them to do, once we tell you over and over again, our lives are in jeopardy because of the failure of communication with number one, the tenants. Number two, we are human beings. Y'all don't go home to the same living conditions. There are some commissioners and there are some people at DC Public Housing that understood months ago, years ago, we keep getting the same people telling us that fair and equal housing has not been given to the people. And we want it to stop. That's what we're asking for. Whether we say it nicely, sweetly, low toned, respectfully, stop talking and do all that you can do for the people that the mayor hired you to do for without overlooking us for a dollar, a gift, a family member because we are the ones that are still suffering from every generation in the past, present, and in the future. That's what we're asking for. Hunt and told y'all, stop doing the people wrong. That's their main part of the audit under every level. They know, just like I said yesterday, they're watching me as they watch you. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. 
Uh, that concludes our resident testimony. I'm going to move now to our non residents. We have uh, three minutes to speak. First on the list is Kim Farmer. Kim Farmer. Hi, I'm here. Thank you. Please proceed. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Kim Farmer. Um, I come to this meeting uh, as a condo owner. Um, the way that people have been treated in public housing is deplorable. And I've seen it with the housing choice vouchers in my own building and I blame the landlords and I blame DCHA and DHS for sending no help for allowing for trauma to concentrate and spread, leaving vulnerable people open to being, you know, being brought into situations that they no longer want to be in. I've had, um, there's a young woman in my building who's been sexually assaulted by a person um, who needs permanent supportive housing. He was allowed to stay here for another year. She works three nights a week. He had 25 feet away from him. She sta he stayed whatever feet away. He violated that. MPD assisted with getting him removed for a little while, never heard from DHS, and he just came back. He, because they said they had no place to put him. Well, we know there are other places. They just haven't been, I guess, fixed or nobody's banning the ship. So the biggest issue for me is these landlords getting twice market rate. And I know Ms. Donald denies this all the time, but it's just not true. I mean, there's a unit that has a rat box outside of it below the street that faces into an embankment that gets, it's 700 square feet, it gets $3,133. In my building, that's $1,600, $1,700. And I know from, con from seeing contracts in court records that a studio in my building is $2,500. Well, I've lived in, DC for almost 30 years. I, I, it's a luxury unit, it's a $2,500 unit. And I live in a building that's 70 years old with parquet floors and everyone's collecting these luxury units while people sit on the wait list, while people struggle without caseworkers, while we know what's happening in public housing. And I understand that the director has just come on within the year, but let's not forget the connection that goes back to mayor bowser i voted for her each time and i'm incredibly disappointed after working on this for two years and doing all the research and following the money i think we know exactly what's going on here even if dcha is fixed there's corruption and malfeasance through developers that goes back to the mayor and She's going to have to deal with that problem and the truth will come out. But in the meantime, you're harming not only very low income people, but the middle class, because condos are the last frontier of anything that's even remotely affordable in the city. I mean, I, it took us 20 years to actually to, uh, finally... stop your testimony here now, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, next is uh, Mildred and William Webb. Mildred and William Webb. Uh, Amy Galati. Amy Galati. Uh, Joe Smith. Yes, I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Smith, please proceed. You have three minutes. Thank you so much. Um, so at the top of this, I'd, I'd like to say it's extremely um, unorganized, uh, rude to make people wait, to not give them adequate times. I was told that I would you know, be speaking at two, and so I've been on hold for quite some time, and I can only imagine what the residents feel like. Um, I'm just an individual who's an advocate. So, Ms. Chairwoman, Honorable Council Members, Executive Director Donald, I am here today as an advocate for those in public housing. Today, more than ever before, I am alarmed by the lack of consistent updates on development efforts on your housing portfolio stock. 
Uh, Mr. Chairwoman, I have lived next to Benning Terrace for four years, which has been an interesting experience to say the least. In early 2019, uh, when I moved into my property, I noticed an alarming number of gunshots and other criminal activity. After many sleepless nights, uh, I empathetically began to realize that what I was feeling was minor compared to what the residents of Benning Terrace might have uh, felt. Um, and so I decided to go into advocate mode. I created and sent a letter to the DC Attorney General's office. Um, in that letter, there were some advocacy groups I um, in, included as well as in, in addition to the news media. Uh, I also cited previous statutory authority and legal precedent such as the nu Nuisance Abatement Act of DC Code 4231-1. Um, and I sent that over to the uh, Attorney General. Um, a little while later, the Attorney General sued the District of Columbia Housing Authority, citing that same legal president. So if anyone on the line, in terms of advocates, uh, want to look that up, it might be helpful. So I'm sad to think uh, I didn't advocate for my neighbors earlier because more lives could have been saved from gun violence or the exhaustive amounts of stress and anxiety that that caused. Um, and after the lawsuit, I was happy to hear that the Housing Authority planned on addressing crime, but it disheartened me that it took a lawsuit for that action uh, to start um, uh, in terms of addressing crime. So currently we are in a new place with new leadership and to address the negligence of proper Pre, uh, of prior preventative maintenance, bad leadership and neglect of those who live in public housing, the Housing Authority has said through its portfolio investment plan, it plans to transform Benning Terrace. Uh, well, in fact, Chairwoman, the executive director herself stood on the football field on Saturday, November 6, 2001, touting her accomplishment of fixing light bulbs on the football field at Benning Terrace Recreation Center. However, to date, I cannot find any updates on the progress of this development. Instead, I see boarded up buildings, which look depressing, and I can only imagine how that feels for the residents in Benning Terrace who've waited for promises of better housing to come to fruition for far too long. So recognizing this dilemma, I want to know two things, very pointed remarks. Will the board commit to providing more consistent updates on the renovation process for all buildings listed in their investment plan? And secondly, will the board explain their decision-making process behind selecting certain buildings in their portfolio to develop while others have still not been developed or there's not a plan? Um, that is all that I have. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, next is Daniel uh, Del Calago. Good afternoon, board and DCHA staff. Uh, just one second, please. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Daniel Lepilogo. I work with Empower DC and with public housing residents all over the city. As I reflect on the HUD report, I'm saddened that it took these measures for any attention to be paid to what public housing residents and their allies say to this very board every month and often to the city council's housing committee. Central to any conversations I have with public housing resident leaders is the need for a culture change at DCHA. DCHA, a shift from seeing resident issues as burdens to a sense of needing to act with real alacrity to solve the very real and dangerous living conditions and issues public housing and housing choice voucher residents are faced with. As this board and the staff engage in responding to HUD and develop plans to fix this knowingly damaged agency, there should be one central tenant guiding that, that work. Do no more harm to public housing residents and voucher residents. The previous administration confirmed that the majority of DCHA's portfolio was uninhabitable, yet people continue to leave, live in these units. The HUD report for, further underscores the terrible living conditions. As such, we highly recommend that DCHA forgives any arrearages DCH residents have accrued over the years. In general, DCHA residents should not be faced with any monetary penalties or assessments given the poor management of the agency and once again, the terrible living conditions. The newly reconstituted citywide advisory board needs to be part of any of the efforts to fix DCHA. Just like residents have told you the problems that ail them and this agency, they also know the solutions. I urge this board to work closely with this body 
who are in touch with a wide number of public housing residents. Lastly, I know, lastly, while I know many internal processes have to change within DCHA, you have to fix and fine tune process, your process. Please do not lose sight that there are still residents living with rats, mold, lead, peeling paint, roofs caving in, leaks, inoperable appliances, unmet transfer requests, etc. Please work towards fixing these issues that affect people right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Saprina Dowdy. Saprina Dowdy. Uh, Chris Williams. Mr. Williams. Okay. Uh, Harry Garol. Mr. Garol. Yes, hi. Yes, please proceed. Yes, I'm Harry Garrell. I'm the president of the Van Ness South Tenants Association and also a group. Oh, let me get my video going there. Um, also part of a group of nine tenant association presidents and others who've been working on issues related to housing vouchers for a long time. Uh, first, I want to say that I'm very sympathetic with the um, uh, residents of public housing that's uh, run by DCHA because it sounds like the, the conditions are horrible and really um, that has to be the number one priority uh, fixing those conditions and I really uh, my heart reaches out to you. I wanted to raise another issue it has to do with housing vouchers because DCHA is misusing federal money um, that's a, for housing vouchers as outlined in the HUD report, particularly if you look at pages 46 and 47. Um, DCHA is supposed to pay no more than market rents for apartments and the approved rents that DCHA is, has set are extremely high, far over uh, median rents in, in various areas. Um, and it uses basis that on some phony um, market analysis by Nova Grotic, which leaves out uh, rent stabilized units. Now, these problems have been known since 2019. There was an article in the Washington Post that, that described terrible uh, issues at Sedgwick Gardens in Cleveland Park. And you would think that DCHA and also the Bowser administration, which has a hand in this, would have backed away from um, the use of voucher, uh, vouchers that they were doing at the time, but instead they've expanded it by 10 or 20 times um, and in different parts of the city. Instead of deconcentrating poverty, which would be the purpose of housing vouchers, they've concentrated it in certain buildings, uh, primarily by placing uh, formerly homeless people, and again, I completely sympathetic and, and do want to house people who are homeless. Um, but housing a number of people in uh, uh, single buildings um, who don't have assistance that they need is a recipe for disaster. And that's what's happened in, in many buildings and entire neighborhoods, because this is part of a plan by the Bowser administration um, to use vouchers for um, uh, to create affordable housing, not building units, as most people assume, but by converting rent stabilized units in much of the city uh, using housing vouchers. HUD is onto this. HUD says it on page 46 and 47 of the report that DCHA is vastly overpaying. Director Donald has disagreed with that, but she's wrong. This is the problem with someone who does not understand uh, housing, um, has no experience, as HUD has said. Um, and HUD wants that money back if you read page 47. So I would urge the strongest possible review of these conditions so that everyone can have better um, and more affordable housing in DC. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the list we have uh, is uh, ANC Commissioner Kelvin Brown. Mr. Brown. Yes, God, can everyone hear me? Yes, sir, please continue. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let me first start off by saying that some of the testimony testimony that I heard from some of the residents in various uh, public housing, housing dwellings has just really just shook me to my core just to hear it. But now I want to just to hear that, see that body languages as well. But greetings, Board of Commission mem members. My name is Kelvin Brown. I'm a deg degree housing professional with over 10, uh, 10 years of housing experience, a veteran, a HBCU graduate, a DC homeowner, a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and currently serve as the ANC Commissioner representing the Hillcrest community 
in SMD 7B06. And also to ground my future statements, my mother and my four, four brothers lived in public housing for over a decade, and we learned the value of housing and its impact on one's life. Let me first start off by expressing my gratitude for holding this emergency meeting to address the findings and the results of the Department of Housing and Urban Development's report. I'm extremely saddened, dismayed, and frankly embarrassed by the low level of accountability, empathy, respect, and lack of dignity afforded to hundreds of public housing residents. Everyone deserves access to affordable, safe, and quality housing. As a housing professional and previous public housing recipient, I know that affordable housing is a human right. Housing is inextricably linked to up upward mobility, positive determinants of health, access to stable careers and jobs, and lastly, obtainment of quality education. Housing is connected to so many life outcomes and lack of affordable, quality, safe housing perpetuates poverty, violence, and reduces and or eliminates generational wealth. Everyone deserves access to affordable, quality, and safe housing. After hearing the uproar and reading through the scathing HUD report, which shine light on the catastrophic and systematic organizational failures to deliver safe, quality, low, moderate to low income housing for our most vulnerable persons, I'm compelled to speak up. No one, regardless of his or her ability to pay or any of the protected classes should be sub subject to live in deplorable and unsafe conditions. One's ability to pay or engage politically should not be used as a, as a tool of subjugation. Everyone deserves access to affordable, quality and safe housing. For the sake of time, I won't go through all the find, findings that were detailed in the HUD report, but I would like to recommend the following actions that concur and are aligned with some of the findings in the HUD report. One, officially release the HUD report to all government agencies to include DC Council Office on Racial Equity for an independent assessment. Two, completely overhaul and strengthen requirements of all executive officers and board commission members and this should be done by a completely independent firm or organization. Three, review, triage, and develop re a remediation plan that takes into account sentiments and opinions and feedback from residents who live there on a daily basis for all units that require maintenance. Four, revisit the number of mayoral appointees to the Board of Commissioners. And five, I recommend that the DC Council Chair Phil Mendelson consider the oversight responsibilities of the DC Council and the members that sit on the Housing Committee. I would like to thank you for your time today. I look forward to working together with all involved parties to help right these legacy wrongs and racist assaults against low-income residents in our great city. DC is a place that is, should be welcoming to everyone that would like to call their home, and the lack of attention and oversight to this critical housing issue is beyond belief. Everyone deserves access to quality, affordable, safe housing. So questions, Mr. would Brown. you like to live in these deplorable conditions? Have you ever lived in public housing? How could you let this happen? Do you have any empathy for the residents? How does this continue to happen to our residents? Who is responsible and who's accountable? It's my sincerest hope that my words spoken here today resonate with this body and that true change occurs that embodies the sentiments of the residents who have spoken today. Lack of safe, Thanks, affordable housing Brian. renders and perpetuates a system of violence and poverty and creates inequities across our great city. We have a responsibility to act. We have a responsibility to act. And before I end my last statement is that just looking at some of the body languages by some of the commissioners, not all, but some of the body language by some of the commissioners and the executive staff, when the residents are speaking directly to you and sharing their personal stories and you smirk and you smile as if you don't care is a testament to what exactly what was found and detailed in this report. You should be ashamed. You answer to the public, you answer to the taxpayer, not to anyone else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, that concludes our testimony list. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming on and testifying for our emergency meeting for HUD's findings. This concludes our meeting for today, but our next Board of Commissioner meeting will be Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, 
at 1 p.m. by WebEx. Have a safe weekend. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. 4.40. Thank you.